<coughs> the degrees of bliss proportionally correspond to the degrees of previous suffering. Say that again. The degrees of bliss proportionally correspond to the degrees of previous suffering. Mm. Wow. So we have no, to suffer these, to these are experience all bliss. <laughs> you have to suffer. Correct. These What's are that? all from MSC Rani. Yes. yes. These are all from Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Wow. Oh, okay. That's a good one. Shall I go, shall we go this way? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> this is, um, life is not meant to be rich in spiritual significance at some distant date, but it is so at every moment. If the mind is disburdened of illusions, only through a clear and tranquil mind is the true nature of spiritual infinity grasped as something which is not yet to be, but which already has been, is, and ever will be an eternal self-fulfillment. When every moment is rich with eternal significance, there is neither the lingering clinging to the dead past, nor a longing expectation for the future, but an integral living in the eternal now. Only through such living can the spiritual infinity of the truth be realized in life. I'll, I'll read it again. It's kind of Please do. Yeah, complicated it's very rich. there. <clears throat> but, okay. Life is not meant to be rich in spiritual significance at some distant date, but it is so at every moment, if the mind is disburdened of illusions. Only through a clear and tranquil mind is the true nature of spiritual infinity grasped as something which is not yet to be, but which already has been, is, and ever will be an eternal self-fulfillment. When every moment is rich with eternal significance, there is neither the lingering clinging to the dead past, nor a longing expectation for the future, but an integral living in the eternal now. Only through such living can the spiritual infinity of the truth be realized in life. And you know what I, I, <clears throat> I think many of us had the experience in early childhood where one day could last a, a month because it, the, the present wasn't wedged in between worries about the future or regrets about the past, you know or even nostalgia for the past. But it's, you know, we, there wasn't much of a future to a young kid, there's not much of a past. So they're really into more the, the expansiveness of the present. And, you know, I've kind of felt in my own life that I was getting me back to being in this moment fully without, let it, let, without being energetically in the future or energetically in the past. But bring bring my awareness in this moment, and then I'll basically re-experience the the expansiveness that I had as a little kid, you know, with the kind of wonder and joy, rather than looking at the at the present through the lens of the past. Mm -hmm. Then it's like um, Baba uses the image of uh, taking a pair of binoculars and turning them around the other way. Mm -hmm. That's how most people are actually looking at life when they become adults. So you turn it around and everything's up close and personal. Mm -hmm. So just question yeah. on that, if it's okay to ask a question? Yeah, yeah. So um, what about the, I mean, I, I understand that we're, we should be in the present. Yeah. However, you know, for those of us who are like constantly planning, I mean, you do think of the future or you, you plan for the future. So. Is that still yeah. okay, or how does that work? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, because, I mean, Baba kind of brought this home to me. Say, say, suppose I've got a root canal that's <laughs> coming on Friday. You know, now, I can stay with that, you know, knowing that i got this root canal. Now, if I'm worried about the root canal, 
and like God, how painful it might be. Then I'm energetically in the past and I'm not <clears throat> fully in the present. You know, and same way, if, if something last week happened and I'm very disturbed with it, then I'm energetic. I can remember, like say, you can remember the past in the present if it's relevant to the present. But a lot of, you know, we go thinking, oh man, that horrible thing happened last week. And, and, we're, and it's still, a lot of our energy is that direction. Then that's, that's where the mistake is. In other words, <clears throat> your past doesn't have to pull you out of the present, you know. But it's, it's hard to do that. I mean, it's, it's withdrawing the tentacles <coughs> of our consciousness from being enmeshed in future dreams as well as anxious things. And the tentacles are, can be linking into the past, regrets, or even nostalgia. I mean, I had a problem with, I had a very idyllic childhood, so this, you know, the, my childhood was interfering with my the expansiveness as the present because as soon as this got to be, uh, you know, even just kind of boring or unimportant, I could just go back and relive some of these beautiful times I had mm -hmm. in my childhood. Whereas I'll never get those beautiful moments of childhood if I don't, those are beautiful because I was in the present back there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to forfeit those same kind of experiences if I'm just living off of that. I don't know if that makes sense. No, 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 no. <clears throat> and my feeling was about planning. Of course we have to plan and set schedules and so forth. But we're not living in the past anticipating the results yeah. of what we're doing. <clears throat> we're just, you know, as long as we don't do that and sit yeah. there worrying about, oh, what if it turns out this way, that, you know, set yourself to, the, to your plan in the moment. You're still in the moment, but you're not worrying about the past. Mm -hmm. So I think that's yeah. the distinction. Yeah, like you could get very excited about planning someone's birthday that's going to happen right. two weeks from now and you're contacting people and you're getting a cake, but you're kind of in the present mm -hmm. with the planning. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even though it's a future event, you're, it's, it's ca captivating you in the present. Anyway, that. That's beautiful. <clears throat> yeah. I think that's a good way to look at it because, yeah. you know, the present is, a, you can't define it at one moment. It's, the present is kind of wide. And I, I had kind of a childhood like you do, but I use that as a kind of an inspiration <clears throat> of the present to me. I mean, I, I thank God, I think, and the service you can give other, you want that, and my past influences that a lot. So, yeah. I mean, in a sense, call it nostalgia or call it you, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's things in the past that are timeless, mm -hmm. that that you're not <clears throat> really living this, leaving this moment to go there. I mean, there's great acts of love and enthusiasm and everything you can draw upon. But if you go, <clears throat> but you're bringing, that, there are the past is coming to the present rather than you're leaving a, 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 an overcast day to go to the sunny times of, of your childhood or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> So, um, yes. what you got? I have a lovely one. If I can go back and hold in memory. <coughs> what happened to my cold? Robert Ahrens came over and took over my pee. <laughs> he did. He just came and took over. I'm sorry. All right, I'll read this one and then I'll go back and fetch that one. Yeah. <clears throat> Love resembles death. You might wonder how. Love resembles death in that it annihilates snobbery, vulgarity, and all distinctions. Divine love is unassailable to the onslaughts of duality and is an expression of divinity itself. <laughs> Love resembles death in that it annihilates snobbery, vulgarity, and all distinctions. Divine love is unassailable to the onslaughts of duality and is an expression of divinity itself. 
beautiful. I wish we had where we got these quotes. I, I can get them. I, I just didn't want to have all these attributions on the quotes. It would have been another. Yeah. Yeah. Death, death is nature's way of telling you you need to slow down. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. <clears throat> so this is Pam and Barry. Oh, hi. I was this is Shilpa to your immediate left. Hello, Shilpa. Her mom, Malini. Hi, Malini. Marietta, originally from Chicago, so she knows, <clears throat> you know, Ferris Day and Jim. Okay, yeah. And I know this lady next to you. <laughs> right. Do I know her? We, we got off really late and I read my phone. Oh, Jeff's speaking. Oh, we gotta go. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, we're just doing quotes, but it, I guess it wasn't too well known <clears throat> that this was going to happen because I couldn't find it anywhere. It's on the website. Yeah. Um, find it on the Circle of Friends. No, it's not on the Circle of Friends. The detail but, uh, is not on the Circle of Friends, but the event certainly is. And it's, the, under, it's under the Sahara. And the link to the detailed schedule events is on the, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. by the Zoom. You know, there's only so much that a small organization can do to knock everybody on the head about an event, you know. I sent an email ever since June, Yeah. every week. One thing we could have done, I suppose, is put the day-to-day -day events on the calendar. We could have, we could but have. then, you know, if, I, if there was any change, then I'd have to change three different places, and guaranteed you I wouldn't remember all the places that I posted. That's why I only had it on one place, one website, and if on that page things changed, then I didn't have to change yeah. all 16 places yeah. that were being posted, you know. Well, I think you've done a great job. Yeah. yeah. Well. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety percent of these things would be happening if it wasn't for Angela. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, so, uh, it, so in, read that again because they have arrived. And then, is there anything that it yes. says, speaks, says to you? Yeah. <clears throat> this quote from Baba says, "Love resembles death in that it annihilates snobbery, vulgarity, and all distinctions." distinctions. This is different than that. Divine love is unassailable to the onslaughts of duality and is an expression of divinity itself. Uh, to me, two things jump out. One is that when you wear the protection of divine love, it's like um, an armor against the onslaughts of this and that, duality, good and bad. Oh, wow, that's powerful. Um, so that tells me that if I'm affected and I'm not living in poise, I don't have the armor of divine love yet. It's still building up, hopefully. It's still, I'm still accumulating my divine love armor hmm. and uh, that that to me is really powerful then the other thing is um, the word it's like death well Baba says living something like is it like living dying? is dying but a being okay. it's living so beautiful is dying by loving by loving hmm. so to die to this to the ego self which loves to separate, loves to distinguish. <clears throat> I think I'm just going to sit with that all day. It's really good. <clears throat> and I kind of think that divine love is actually tra transmutes the good and bad and the right and wrong and the loving and unlovingness of the world. But then that's the rust thing. Apparently, it's like, it's like an armor. I mean, the onslaught of duality is always there. Yeah. You're just immune to it. You're no longer affected by it, because duality is there. And Baba says, when you wake up from the dream, you'll realize that it's not real. Yeah. 
So how can something unreal, no matter how dual it seems, affect you? you know? Yeah. But but at the same time, there's a Rumi has the line, a lover of God. Is a heart without a shield. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is that. <laughs> I mean, a lover of God. It is a heart without a shield. I, I mean, you're deeply affected, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you you, you lose your points. Right. It's just painful yes. points. Yes. Yes. Good point. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Marietta. Okay. I have, love is essentially self-communicative. Those who do not have it, catch it from those who have it. Those who receive love from others cannot be its recipients without giving a response, which in itself is of the nature of love. True love is unconquerable and irresistible. It goes on gathering power and spreading itself until eventually it transforms everyone it touches. That's my favorite mm -hmm. one quote. Is it? Yes. It's definitely it, very it. much up there on the phase yeah. list. Re read it once again to you. read it beautifully. Oh, okay. Yeah. Love is essentially self-communicative. Those who do not have it Catch it from those who have it. Those who receive love from others cannot be its recipients without giving a response which in itself is of the nature of love. True love is unconquerable and irresistible. It goes on gathering power and spreading itself until eventually it transforms everyone it touches. Yeah, that's one of my favorites too. <coughs> yeah. So, can I ask a question? Yeah. On that? <laughs> I'm the one with the question. Yeah. yeah, no, it's good. Um, so sometimes, right? I mean, of course, you, and I love this quote. I think it's one of my faves, but is the expectation of the return of that love, right? Because it does say eventually it'll transform whoever, the other person or the being. But then, um, what if you don't see that transformation, right? Like, how do you settle <laughs> yeah. for, and keep giving? I mean, I know yeah. it's, it's supposed to be unconditional, yeah. but, you know, we're human. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you, I mean, you, <clears throat> you may not see it. That's the sad thing. In other words, it may take a long time for someone to, their wall to crumble. It, and you're just taking a brick off brick by brick, you know, and you may not even see the results in your in your time. But I just think having a faith that when you're expressing love, it is it is working. It's hitting. It's it's doing what it's to do, whether or not you see any evidence of it. Just the same way as you, <clears throat> I mentioned, you <clears throat> see a, a young child. If, if you're the mother, if, if you don't see the child really growing, but when your grandmother shows up, she's <laughs> So it's very hard. You know, that what you just said triggered an image in me of a child is so busy being a child, mm -hmm. busy playing with toys of illusion, um, that they don't notice the love you're giving. They don't, they don't realize it's love. They just know it's there and they take it for granted and they might you know, not respond to you the way you'd love to, but they're because it's busy, they're busy doing being children. And we don't fault them for that. And, and, and if a person goes out, when I went to college, <clears throat> I mean, I, I was kind of loved growing up but I, when I went to college, there were a lot of people who didn't receive love. Uh, they didn't come out of childhood feeling lovable. And so then they're having to compensate by getting attention and 
getting high wars and everything <coughs> like that, all to kind of fill up the emptiness <coughs> that they didn't receive. I mean, it's <coughs> so parents in in giving and transmitting all that, creating a, a, an environment of love. You're really making it much easier for your child when they go out into the world. They don't have to first overcome a bad low self-esteem and then try to get on with life. They already have this, a healthy self-esteem and, they, and they're going to be ups and downs, but that's a lot different mm -hmm. from if you're trying to fill uh, a lack of a, a oh, sense of unworthiness. Me. Boy, you spend years and years just trying to feel worthy, <coughs> let alone to begin to try to love. So. There was a quote that came by email about self-esteem, and I'll have to look it up, but it, it was interesting because you know how Baba talks about having a strong self-esteem is actually the stepping stone to actually realizing God, because you can't, you can't achieve forward progress without having some confidence in yourself. You have to actually... Yeah. Yeah, it's possible to have self-esteem without egoism. Mm -hmm. It is really po it, and you know, self-esteem doesn't mean ego. <clears throat> it's kind of, it's a, a self that's, that's solid with love. Mm. You know, it has a good... Good foundation. <clears throat> Are we ready for the next? Shall we go to Jim? We'll go to the back row there. That's okay. Um, I just wanted to mention before I read this is <clears throat> we get these a lot of times at New Year's, and these always become very personal to me. So not only is it fun to share it, but I keep these because it's a good thing. I, I feel there's a certain personal thing that Baba has given me. And it always seems to be apropos at the time. <clears throat> Whenever you feel others are unjust and you feel they pass remarks, or you feel you are right and they are in the wrong, the very moment you feel all this, remember me and get control. Pinch yourself. <laughs> Go aside. You must take practical steps. <laughs> Read that one again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to make appropriate pauses here. There are some dots. <laughs> yeah. Whenever you feel others are unjust, and you or you feel they pass remarks, or you feel you are in the right, and they are in the wrong. The very moment you feel all this, remember me and get control. Pinch yourself, <laughs> go aside, take practical steps. You know, before you go on to that, we, I did, I, we didn't find out kind of what, in reading that, your response when you read. Oh, well. Um, I feel love is very important in life. I think it's essentially what's missing in the world today. And I remember my childhood. It was glorious. I had wonderful parents. And when I became a mother, I consciously tried to avoid the mistakes I felt my parents made with me. But it backfired. <laughs> I should have done what they did. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a lesson I learned in that. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Anything my, specific? My because mother, my mother, well, she was, uh, controlling. She wanted the absolute best for me. She wanted to make all of my decisions. So when I became a mother at 40, I decided that I would allow Ashley and Amber 
make decisions that they believed would make them happy, as long as they were within reason. And that backfired. <laughs> I don't have the closeness with them that I had uh, brought about that child method of raising them. I don't. I don't have the closeness, and that's a. Uh, that's a regret I'll probably always have. I, I, I haven't seen the transformation. I just, I just bombed out. I tried, but it didn't work. So I, I just uh, go on from day to day. This stage in my life, I'm not so hard on myself for making the mistakes I made because I meant well. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm I'm happy. I'm uh, I'm at at an age I never was before, so things are different now. <laughs> I don't I don't get uh, I don't get too outdone about too much. Why should I? You know, why should I? I think that there's always an inherent flaw in parenting. That's the nature of parenting. Yeah. And there's always <coughs> some <coughs> deficiency that children feel that their parents had, but this is part of the nature of being human. So uh, you know, I have two daughters, and one is adopted. I think I failed to see how much that hurt her that her mother gave her. Adoption I, is I very never, difficult. I never even considered it because I loved you. I loved you. I got you as an infant and, and, and I never lied. You always knew you were adopted. You didn't really know what it meant until you were nine. You could reason and you, you knew what it meant. But uh, I, I, I guess that's why she's so distant and out of communication and resentful. And I just don't understand why I never saw it. I never considered that being adopted would hurt her. Like that. And that's the only explanation I can give for her distance is that she must be mad because of her birth mother. Yeah. She must be angry about that. There are very, very intense issues around adoption. That, yeah, yeah, I'm reading that now. Yeah. And and then the uh, rivalry between her and the and the baby I gave birth to. Was that after? They, yeah. Uh, and I discovered I was pregnant on the very day of uh, Ashley's birthday. She was mm -hmm. one year old. And I gave this birthday party for her. All the mothers came when they brought their little toddlers and, Marianne, aren't you going to have some cake? No, I don't feel good. I just, no, I don't want any cake today. <laughs> I didn't, and then the next day I was even worse. And I told my former spouse, I, I better, I, I either pregnant or I'm going to die. <laughs> and, and I was pregnant. And I was just so joyful over that. And you know, they were the sweetest children. They were close in age. They were good friends. And they were loved. But um, and I wasn't able to, to keep us cohesive. We, we're not cohesive. I have the exact same situation. Oh, my. <laughs> Let's I talk about your situation. We'll have to talk after this. Yeah, you have a lot to say. <laughs> you know, Amazing. The, we... Um, I work over here at the center and many parents come that are in the same situation where their children are kind of alienated, they're alienated from their kids. And kind of what I gather from Bob is his, he called them his mandali, his disciples. He called his, them what? Uh, his mandali, his oh, disciples, oh, okay. is if you create a space of unconditional love, for them, in you, 
one day they will come knocking at your door because everybody is looking for love and especially unconditional love that you can give. They're one day, you know, hold, just hold that and they will one day come. Well, you know, that I think that's true because uh, Amber, the one I gave birth to, uh, she communicates with me. It's not regular, but yeah. she's uh, less, uh, well, you know, she was tacky. <laughs> she's less tacky than she was. But, you know, <laughs> even the other one, when she has she, the opportunity, Ashley, the opportunity to resolve her issues with the anger she has toward her mother, birth mother, she will come back to you. Well, I hope so. I I would would hope so. She did find her birth mother. I learned that from Amber. And Amber um, communicated to me that uh, on Ashley's Facebook page, uh, she has this picture of this woman. And a Amber texts me the picture and said, do you know who this woman is? And I said, no. And she said, Ashley has her on her Facebook page as her birth mother. And then I realized she looks just like her. She's a beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know whatever happened with that. I, I lost the communication with Amber, I mean with Ashley altogether. She, she doesn't want communication with Amber or me. So we don't really know where she is. Somewhere in the Chicago area. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, Amber's Amber's coming back a little bit. Yeah. I mean, there's not much personal love in this world. You know, that's the thing that's lacking, is personal love. And I mean, in the business world or wherever you work, I mean, there are people that are sometimes wrong friendly. I'm just wondering. <laughs> I mean, I think that's why Bob became God, God or comes as a man because, as a to bring bring per, the personal love, the importance of personal love back in the world. You know, it's just gotten too too impersonal. I mean, you used to know your neighbors. Mm -hmm. That's very I mean, oh, there was so many. You used to know the grocer, the yeah. you know milkman. Uh, milkman. The all doctor used that. to come to your house. Yeah. <clears throat> the mailman, and it's uh, like I say, we're all. They're smaller also, you know, the community is a little more <coughs> yeah. contained. You know what amazes the neighbors. me is if you call a, 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 your doctor, you have to listen to a 10-minute uh, <laughs> yes. voicemail. Voice uh, call this number oh, if you want to know this, and yeah. call that number. And uh, if you have a question about this, uh, you'll have to go to the website. It's just a long, a long spiel. Yeah. Can I never oh. talk to the doctor. I never yeah. talk to I just want to know, can I keep my, can I come next week? <laughs> only I, an hour I, I early only or talk something. to her when I go to the appointment. Oh then I see goodness, her. It's so crazy. Yeah. Before yeah. that. No. You know, it's interesting. Mom and I were having this conversation the other day in general about how nobody has the time now to sit and talk. Yeah. I mean, I see that, of course, you know, our kids are little and going in 10 different directions. But even then, like, you know, even if somebody's trying to talk to me, sometimes my mind is racing at a million miles an hour with something else. I'm like, oh, I gotta get this done. <laughs> Angela, you said that the other day, mm -hmm. right? But it's true, and it's such a web that we're caught in. Yeah. Where, you know, like, and I know Baba said, like, you know, love is listening, right? Like, be a good listener. But it also is difficult to be a good listener because we're so, we have, and especially for, I feel like most of us, we're afraid that we're going to forget to say something, you know, because the thought's going to go away. So we talk over one another. And, and I see it everywhere. It's, it's not just, you know, in my household, but I see that happening. Oh, you're talking to someone and they're checking their phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. But we're all attached to our gadgets. But, mm -hmm. but you know, it's just the, the communication is... It's very different, right? And I said, I, this wasn't like that like six years ago, seven years ago. It's more recent that I've noticed. And it's interesting. People in the same house won't have time to talk to one another. I think people don't listen yes. when they're in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, some people talk too much.
too long, mm -hmm. so it's you you lose what they're saying. You're not really listening. And then <laughs> you you may you may say something, and then they say this. Then when you get back to them, well, but do, remember I said this, and and you you didn't hear it. You, you it you know it's just it is tricky because we are not present in the yes. moment. Very yeah. Present. You know, well, I think we just hear too many words. You talk to someone and instead of listening, your mind racing up, what are you going to say next? Right. You know, instead yeah. of just be present, Focus, listen to right. this person. That's the connection. That's what happened, the connection between us. When you really listen, the, peop the person feels that you are there, you know, listening. Yeah, and the, and then and you make the connection. If you're not there, there's no connection. There's no connection. And when you feel this, that that they're really listening, that they're really focused on you, it gives you a comfort feeling knowing that you're yeah. sharing with them. That's love. Yeah. I mean, I remember my encounter with uh, Baba's direct disciples in India when I got there in 2001 to check out this Mayor Baba. Who is he? He's, he's claiming a lot. Let me check him out, you know? My mind was, my heart was already like convinced, but my mind had to be convinced. And I met these women, disciples of her, of Mayor Baba, Katie and Arnavaz and Dr. Goher. And I mean, when you're in front of them, they would be just, you know, these are disciples of a very important spiritual presence on our planet at this time, they, you would think they'd be like scatterbrained and busy and having all kinds of things and people and you were the only thing that mattered at that moment. All mm. their attention mm. was with you and you felt like completely in their embrace. Marriages mm. like that, yeah. right? Yeah, that felt was seen. Uh, yeah. As you always knew yourself. You know, it's just so disarming and so loving. Like even my mother or anybody, you know, never experienced that kind of presence and attention mm -hmm. and acceptance. You know, I have to say that I feel that I lack as a mother to do that with my own children. Because I feel that we're always like, oh, it's 8 o'clock, come on, time for bed. Or we got to, you know, it's, it's that, I think we're caught so much in that, Okay, routine, routine, routine. It's great to have routine, but you know, I feel especially during the pandemic where all of a sudden, you know, without having, I used to have babysitters who helped us, right? And now it's just you and your kids and you're doing a million things. You lose that time. As much as I'd love to just sit and do nothing and just talk, it doesn't happen. And May it's I say sad, something? but you know, yeah, go ahead. Look at the list on your day and trim it down. Right. Well, we're trying. <laughs> you know, what is really important? Right. What is important to you and your kids? That's what matters. Yeah. I also think that where we hold it, you know, I think that, you know, Baba wants us to think that he is the only one doing. And if that were really true, you know that song that Sidhu sings, you know? Um, do not do anything while doing everything. Yeah. I love that Baba song. himself is doing it all, you know. Yeah. I think that the more I check into that, even though I'm busy and you see that I'm busy, it's, it's for him and he has a way of showing that he's really done it all. Exactly. And our, our trying to do it all actually makes it harder. That actually if we would just relax into because that time of listening with your kids doesn't have to be scheduled a half an hour of listening. Yeah. It's that in between, exactly. even the 30 seconds of deep listening mm -hmm. is like an infinity. Like, yeah. you know, it's that moment of like stretching it so that it's not you rushing around doing things. It's that things come together and you just sort of have to ride the wave, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think you're right. It's just those moments, right? driving in the car and then you, you know it's I think that's where before like growing up mom and I had so many conversations yeah. like, well, I don't do this yeah <laughs> oh, how know? did you find time right but, but in the but car it's, and it's also you know they it's also now where they're at the age where they choose to be that busy yeah, yeah. you know so what can you do but support you know yeah. and uh, so I agree and at the same time when I feel that way I said you know what Baba's doing this why am I worried he has something planned 
I'm doing the best. And like I said, intention is so important because whatever you know, everyone does, we do it with a pure intention. So yeah. that's all that matters at I the think, end of the day. <laughs> I think in a way, though, it's important to teach kids this, this modern world kids are so busy and they take on so much and they feel all this pressure because they can't get into college without 50 million things. Mm -hmm. But actually, even though colleges like to see a lot of activity in a kid's life, they also like to see thinking and passion. Mm -hmm. And so if they would actually simplify to the things that really give them passion now, all those other hobbies and interests could come later if they would, if they would also learn yeah. to settle into this and that time actually stretches and it's not necessary you know it's great if they get into an ivy league i i promise that it's worth it but <laughs> but if <laughs> oh but it is <laughs> i think it means a lot to people from the east coast i haven't seen anybody with the east coast people feel that but just me uh, i want to share an experience with you guys when i worked at cook county hospital um, we got a visit from Princess Diana, yeah. and uh, I was closest this to her. Not a flaw on her legs. I couldn't believe it. Not a scratch or a scar. I thought she must have gone through childhood with high boots because I got scars. You know where I fell. And was it but, here in the states? Yeah, in Illinois, in Chicago. Yeah, she came to Cook County Hospital. And she came to visit primarily the AIDS ward, uh, which was Ward 23, of course. And um, the, when we were talking about listening and being a devout person that gives you the attention, she was so very gracious. I noticed she kept her hands like this. I often do that, <laughs> trying to emulate. And she looks down because uh, she was quite tall mm -hmm. when she looks at you. She would go to the bedside of the patients and sit right there and touch their hands and focus right on you. And I couldn't hear what she was saying because she was talking directly to them and it was private. But she was inquiring about them and their care and how they felt and were their needs being met? Did they have any particular concerns? She, she just had the posture of someone that really cared uh, mm -hmm. about you. Mm -hmm. And of course, she didn't know them, and she'll never see them again yeah. because you know that was her ambassadorship. That's that's what she did. Mm -hmm. But I never forget the way she appeared when she walked through the dismal halls at Cook County Hospital. It was an old building. She was so gracious. Wow. And so gorgeous. Yeah. So gorgeous. <laughs> it reminds me of Bob's thing about being in the internal now. I just read Charles Haynes' book, and I think there's that quote from Barber about the importance of being in the present, being in the now, not being, thinking about yesterday, not thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow, but just to be in the now. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. In fact, we read that at the beginning. Yeah. It turned oh, out. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's go back to Jim, though. We, uh, we, left we forgot what you read, Jim. <laughs> How are we doing on time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I but more. read it one more time, and then and, and you, you, I think you were about to say something in regard to it. <clears throat> Whenever you feel you feel others are unjust or you or they or you feel they pass remarks or you feel you are right and they are in the wrong the very moment you feel all this remember me and get control pinch yourself go aside you must take practical steps I wonder what that means. You must take practical steps. Maybe not well, just irrational. stepping away from the scene is a practical mm -hmm. step. Mm -hmm. You go back to your natural presence. Not, not be in the presence of something that's triggering you. Yeah. So yes, yeah. So what, what is that? 
Well, for me, again, how it speaks to me is whenever you feel others are unjust or they pass remarks, I don't really, to me, those are kind of rumory type things. I don't really care about that part. Yeah. You get into a part where you are right and, you know, and I am wrong or something like that, that becomes kind of personal. I know my wife and I go around about that. I go around about that with a lot of people. And sometimes how you react to that, I wish more. I could do more, pinch myself and walk away, and then maybe address how I feel. <laughs> yes. I tend to get right in the middle of it right away. Um, Baba says in some ways, if you, I think it was Bao or Baba, I can't remember, says, you know, sometimes you're right. You know they are wrong, but it's much better just to, okay, you know, that's, yeah. that's okay. Take practical steps to me means is just, as he says, you can face the thing directly, which we were kind of in the middle of just lately. Practical steps would be go back and talk to the person or something like that directly. You know, get it out in the open. Don't hide it. It doesn't have to be confrontational. So this speaks, that's how it speaks to me, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see it as try to see the situation from, from their eyes, their point of view. You feel they're unjust. Well, let me look at it from the way you're looking at it. And then maybe I can see the difference. Yeah, that's good. Baba has suggest you know, to, to with, without being self-referenced, get over into the other person to see how they see things, yeah. rather than looking through the lens of yourself with all of its opinions at that person over there and it's got like a differing opinion. But yeah. it's very hard to get over into somebody on their own terms. Yeah, you know, it is difficult. It takes a lot to be able to wear the lenses they are wearing. Mm -hmm. because they're wearing a set of lenses acquired from this life and many, 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 many other lives, which are quite different from the lenses you're wearing from this life and many, 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 many other lives. Right. So it's a real talent mm -hmm. to be able to do that, walk in somebody else's shoes or see the world from their the way they are seeing it and experiencing it. I think only God can do that. I honestly don't know if that's within the human realm. Well, well you know, like Erich, Erich was kind of the closest of Baba's of the men. I felt when I talked to him about my issues, especially when I was younger, I felt he was like, he knew the situation better than I did. <laughs> that was, he was able to get his consciousness from, from being inside of him, he's able to kind of come over and be in me and see it from my view, you know. I mean, it is humanly possible, I mean, uh, that we can get over into someone else's life as they experience it on their own terms. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's intuition that kind of intuition. pulls out of our melodrama and is able to go over drop into someone else. But there's no condemnation, you know, it can't be any condemnation, it has to be, you know, almost like to see them for, for, for what they are. Even, <clears throat> even if you can't fully see their point of view, wasn't there a Baba quote where he's like, there's no spiritual value in, in, in apology, in, in yielding when you are wrong, but there's great spiritual value in yielding when you are right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah this is the, right, I, I yeah. know the, the quote. Uh, when the, you know you're right. Mm -hmm. It is nothing to give in when you are wrong, but it has spiritual value to give in when you are right. Now, who, I, I call that an inconvenient truth. An inconvenient <laughs> truth. <laughs> I mean, it's like, very it's very hard. Yeah. But I think that's also on the flip side, right? I think, and this is, I think we discussed it uh, with Nash and, like, you know, sometimes during the discourses that we have. Um, I think also there's value in sometimes, uh, somebody had said this 
when we were having this discussion once. And they said, yes, but at the same time, say if you are feeling suppressed, right, from this whatever individual, it's important to stand up for yourself at the same time. And, and I think it's a balance that you strike. So where, you know, sometimes we do feel that somebody may be a little overbearing and you need to be able to say, okay, I agree, we, you know, I see your point of view, but at the same time, I can't let this happen over and over and over again. So, so I think it's a, it can be done with poise, <laughs> you know, but it takes time. But I also agree that sometimes when the situation is happening, you're burdened with your own sanskaras, with your own conditions. whatever issues you're facing and conditions at that time. You're not able to see that person's point of view. But when you just sit back and actually assess it, you do. And I said, oh, like I, that happened to me recently and it was a tough time and I said, oh, okay, I think I see where this person's coming from. Let me try to help them. So what went from, um, okay, I, you know, like not necessarily confrontation, it went more towards empathy. And mm. I'm feel like, okay, I think I'm learning something here, <laughs> yeah. you know, but because it's always I, me, mine that we think of, right? Oh, I'm tired or I, you know, I'm going through all of this, but we don't really think of what the other person's going through. So I think it takes time and grace and a lot of empathy to be able to do that, but, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, but I think what you say is <clears throat> sometimes I would say, you know, instead of like that you're standing up for yourself, you're standing up for truth. Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, you, you may disoppose somebody, <clears throat> but it, there's uh, defending your ego, and then there's also that they're doing something that's in violation, uh, you feel, of, of a loving truth. Agreed. You know, yeah. so you have to stand up for it. Yeah. That's different from uh, standing up for for what you feel is right. Okay. You know, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's no. A subtle I think you, you phrased it better than I. Yeah. Did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah. I also think you know. I, it strikes me that there's also a difference between barking. You know, like, hey, you can't step there. That that hurt. And carrying it, like you know, like therefore this person is X Y Z evil or non-thinking. I mean, like we carry these things and uh, judgments of others that like are are like that teaching story of, you know, that that the monk story where there's two monks who are who are walking and it's actually a a, a cool teaching story that I learned in uh, a Buddhist context. So there are two monks they were walking. Uh, they're going from one monastery to another and they have to cross this river and they encounter this woman who's just like oh please help me I, I, for whatever reason she can't swim or whatever it was and she just desperately needs to get across and please help and so the elder monk says sure picks her up takes her across you know walks right over and puts her down and the other monk the younger one is just watching this and thinking and thinking and for like you know, three miles, says nothing, says not a word. And then finally he's just, he just burst out with it. How can you, you know, Buddha said not to, not to even, you know, you're a monk, you, you made a vow not of chastity, not to, you know, not to even talk to him. Not only did you talk to him and you touched her, not only did you touch her, you carried her, you carried her for like a whole, like, you know, across the whole river. And the monk said, ah. You're still carrying her. I let her down at the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. No, it really is. I mean, it's, it's, it's so good. Yeah, that, so. That perpetuating resentment, you know, that's... So, like, it's fine to bark, too. right? But, like, not to carry it, like, yeah. for... The brooding. Yeah, right, yeah. that constant revisiting of the... <laughs> well, that reminds me of a story. I'm, I don't know if it's apropos. <clears throat> oh, should I tell it? I guess right. I should. Oh, well, now that you've... <laughs> well, there's a flood, and this okay. woman is uh, chased out of her house up on the roof, and the rescue boat comes by. Come on! Oh, no, I'm waiting on the Lord. <laughs> yes. And it goes, and then here comes another boat. Come on, yeah. I'm waiting on the Lord. The Lord will save me. <laughs> He's going to save me. <laughs> and then another rescue comes. I'm waiting on the Lord. Go. And then the next thing you know, she topples over and she drowns. Mm -hmm. 
Well, she does make it to heaven because she's a good person. What happened? I was waiting on you, Lord. You didn't. I sent three people to get you, and you wouldn't get on board, so I just brought you on up here. <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah. That's oh, very cute. That was so funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's I don't know if that's appropriate. No, that's great. Right. 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 Another quote. Another quote. Yeah. All yeah. right. Okay, yes, Molly. We're, we're running out of time. <laughs> Love cannot be born or mere of mere determination, through the exercise of will, one can at best be dutiful. A sense of duty comes to the individual as an external constraint on behavior. When as in a sense of duty, love is predominantly impersonal. It often makes one cold, rigid, and mechanical. But in divine love, there is unrestrained freedom and unbounded spontaneity. Mm -hmm. Read that once again. Again? Sure. Yeah. Love cannot be born of mere determination. Through the exercise of will, one can at best be dutiful. A sense of duty comes to the individual as an external constraint on behavior. When, as in a sense of duty, love is predominantly impersonal, it often makes one cold, rigid, and mechanical. But in divine love, there is unrestrained freedom and unbounded spontaneity. Yeah. So good. That's so very true. So, yeah. so very true. So good. Yeah. If we don't do it with, in, in, I mean, like in, with your heart, then it's just going from one job to the other. Even love becomes like that. It's more even mechanical as it's. Like. It's it's about appearance then. Yes, it's almost exactly. like a, yeah. yeah. Well, even even good. Mm -hmm is kind of a, a matter of willpower. Yes. A, 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 a spontaneous, love is spontaneous. Mm. Good is just, a, a, at best, a millisecond short of <laughs> spontaneity. You know, you, 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 oh, I should do this, and then you do it. Mm -hmm. Whereas love just, there's a line from, um, from Victor Hugo, who was a French novelist, yeah. that I like, where he says, Vert, uh, Virtue, as in the case of vice, is a calculated action. Mm -hmm. But love is not calculated. No. Mm -hmm. It wells up in the heart and expresses itself spontaneously. Yeah. You know, so I mean there's nothing wrong with virtue, but it's not doesn't have that freshness, mm -hmm. that spontaneity, that that whatever, that purity yes. of when when you get eclipsed by love mm -hmm. in doing things. Yeah. 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 In fact, someone can be very, very good. I've seen some people who are very, very good, and uh, and they're not very loving. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard to imagine. I mean, it's but, very you know, or someone's very, very dutiful. They're working hard. They're doing everything, and yet you don't feel much uh, joy. You don't feel that. Yeah, yeah, I don't feel that that warmth and mm -hmm. joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's tiring to keep up the that appearance. <laughs> yeah, but, or it might just be that you're living according to a, a, a you know, a belief system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. You may, you know, you just and you, that's controlling everything you do. It's exhausting. Instead of love. Yep. Yep. And lose the spontaneity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and the, the freshness and the and the inner mm -hmm. inner. Uh, refreshment. Right. I think that's that's actually a tremendous quote there. Right. Yeah. Okay, mom. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So mine is. We are all one, <clears throat> and irritations are only surface ones. They cannot affect the love we have for each other deep down. Mm -hmm. One more time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. We're all one, and irritations are only surface ones. They cannot affect the love we have for each other deep down. Mm -hmm. I love this one. Uh, that pretty much answers your question there. Everything I know it was on point. Everything you were yeah, talking about. Yeah, on point. I, I, had, I, put the, I had that quote in my wallet back in the 70s until it eventually shredded. <laughs> <laughs> that, I just felt, that is the truth. Yeah. We already love each other. Mm -hmm. 
uh, we're just know. removing the debris that makes right. it seem otherwise. Mm -hmm. okay. Debris indeed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what, what? So what does that? Um, what does that? <coughs> Resume? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think pretty much everything we've talked about, like Angela said, and it's interesting when I read that, when it, I think, I forget when you sent it last week, um, it just resonated so much with me uh, because of all the stuff that was going through. And I said, I agree. I was like, I need to remember this because sometimes I feel like, um, you know, when Baba said, like, when you're angry, don't let it come to the heart, right? And And I think... I mean, it's a work in progress, <laughs> but I'm trying that much and more and more. But I do realize that, you know, I get irritated with people, but that doesn't mean I don't love them. And, and I think I'm at that spot, and I hope it continues. But so, so I loved it. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Welcome to relationship, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the other day he said to me, you know, I love you, and I said, I love you, and it's a good thing because we sure get irritated. Yeah. Each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. But what's nice is that there's like a superficial irritation. Right. And there's an irritation that feeds into a resentment. Yeah. Ongoing resentment with somebody. That's the thing that I get in trouble. I mean, I, I don't like to see in people. I mean you somehow, oh, why did you drop that? Yeah, I bought that, that was my favorite plate and you broke it. Yep. And it's just a big surge, but then it just evaporates. Oh, God. Yes. You know. And that's a different kind of love, uh, uh, anger from the other one that feeds into resentment. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. That you keep, that you've got already an attitude toward that person. Mm. It's hard to melt. It's like the computer, right, where you keep putting it in trash, it goes into the recycle bin. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you don't empty the recycle bin. Oh, good. You know, good. Very good in that. It's, like, yeah. it's still yeah. clogging yeah. up your hard drive. Yeah. 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 Got to erase the stuff from there. It still holds recycle. memory. It still holds uh, yeah, it's <laughs> taking room on your hard drive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, it's not given to everybody to be a lover of God. Mm. Such lovers are so consumed in the final love that they're not conscious of their stage of spiritual progress. And they do not have any thought of union with God. They simply enjoy the pain and torture of love and long for more and more of it. They are perfectly resigned to the state in which they find themselves. And when their resignation reaches its climax, is the beloved who seeks union with them. I really like it because I sometimes, when I'm stressed out, I go through a gr gratitude left list. And, and one of my great things I'm gratified with is that I do have this belief in God and Baba. I, and a lot of people don't. And it, uh, sometimes I think the problem in the world is there's so less, less and less spirituality. Mm. The only thing I think, time I think of union with God is when I say the prayer. Our beloved God, help us to love you more and more, you know, union with you. Um, enjoying the pain and torture of love and longing for more of it. And I can remember when I started this path, I would go into the lagoon cabin and cry and cry and cry, and I was never sure what I was crying about, but I think I was crying for the love of God. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I find this very meaningful. Mm -hmm. Shall I read it again? Yeah. <laughs> it's not given to everybody to be a lover of God. Such lovers are so consumed in the fire of love that they are not conscious of their stage of spiritual progress, and they do not have any thought of union with God. They simply enjoy the pain and torture of love and long for more and more of it. They are perfectly resigned to the state in which they find themselves. And when their resignation reaches its climate, it's the beloved who seeks union with them. Mm. There's a line from Baba that Eric used to quote. Don't be so much, the, uh, this may not be exact, don't be so much the seeker as the sought. Mm -hmm. become, the, become the sought. Mm. And then 
you kind of get got off his perch, so to speak, and comes down. <laughs> <laughs> no. Baba I mean, says he's the slave of his lovers, right? Yeah, well, one of the images I have is, say, a mother is at the kitchen, and she's, you know, doing the dishes, and the, and the sandbox is right outside, and you've got two, two of her children. One is, um, one is absorbed in making like a castle, very absorbed in it and, and elaborate and everything. The other kid knows that his mother's up there, so he's, you know, doing funny things like putting s s sand on his shirt or something like that. Which one, which one attracts, which one is most attractive to the mother? Yeah. The naughty one who is the sand. No, actually, I, I think it's the one that's absorbed, you know, so absorbed in that that you want to see what is he absorbed in, you know? Oh. What is that little kid? Oh, the other one was more normal, like... Yeah, normal <laughs> kind of thing. I, I don't know, the but I mean, that's that type of thing with this must here, I mean, this, that you read about, is so absorbed, it's not even interested in the goal or everything, it's so absorbed, and then, then God comes over and says, hmm, what you looking at? interesting. <laughs> what? what you looking at? What you doing? <laughs> You know, rather than someone that's trying to, you know, hey, hey I'm over here, here, look at me. Here I am. Here I am. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's, that's that's an interesting image. Yeah. One quote I think you mentioned: God is the slave of the love of His lovers, right? Yes. Not his lovers. Nice. The love of His lovers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Is. Okay, this is kind of a difficult one because it's so long. I'm going to take one sentence at a time. The first one says, divine love does not require any special type of context or making itself felt. That's very true. This is, this, we're talking about love now, and it can be talked about love, and love can be in any, any place, any time. But the important point to me is divine love. Divine love comes from God. It does not come from people. Divine love comes God to us, and that's how we more and more understand what love is and the first person has said that you get love from somebody and that somebody passes on yeah. so you have to we have to try to be love more and more people so they will go on and give love to other and that's what I work on myself because I'm not feeling like loving so much <laughs> all the time and I don't love anybody for sure I don't love anybody I don't even like lots of people <laughs> <laughs> honesty, doesn't he said honesty? But I would say be honest. Yes, so I'm yes. honest. Okay, I'm not yeah. a very loving person, but the older I get, the more loving I am. Yes. Because I know I don't have any more years to, to live. And so I try to and me loving means you smile at them and you listen more than you talk to them. And uh, and somebody else said, Well what they don't disagree with you. Again, you don't have to be dishonest and say, oh, that's just what you say is perfect. If you don't agree with it, you can say, that's interesting what you say. Mm -hmm. I, don't un I don't understand what the, your perspective is on that. And they tell something, well, this is way, why I look at it. And then I usually say, looking at it from you, what you said, very right. I looked at it uh, at a different way, and I thought, well, you were wrong because I have a different life, and I look at a different perspective out of it. But I think, is it possible that both of us could be right? Mm -hmm. Most of the time people say, I guess both of you could be right. Mm -hmm. You misunderstood me, mm -hmm. maybe you understand me. And we shake our hands and we go our way. So that's just, that, that's just the first yeah. one. Yeah. Goes on and on and on. It, says, <laughs> it need not await from rare moments for this expression, nor it is on the lookout for somber situations that savor our special sec sanctity. It's sort of just what I said. This can be anywhere in your life. It can be somebody with you you just met, somebody you friend who, do you, who, you, who made you angry. You go to that friend, make sure that I go to that friend. Why did you say that to me? Oh, okay, now I understand. Thank you very much. Now I really, I like you, I love you. I don't love very many people. People say I love this, I love that. Uh, they like it, but I don't think they love it. It's like somebody says, I really love music. How much do you listen to music? Well, I haven't listened to it for about two or three weeks. Well, how much do you love it, really? You like it. 
Anyway, that's another thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it, it, it dis discovers its expression in every incident and situation that might be passed over by an unenlightened, the unenlightened person as too insignificant to deserve attention. To me, that is very important here. And that is the, the Baba people here. And we look at some of the Baba people and we think, well, that person was with Baba and that person is more important than somebody else. Nobody is more important here than anybody else. He says that. And awesome. when you love somebody, you smile at them. When I try to smile at them, and I try to be nice to most people. And if somebody's, I mean, you can step in if somebody isn't doing right, but but has to be, uh, I mean, it's going to hurting somebody, you're not, not going to let them do it. But but anyway, the, the, the love thing uh, is very important to me now. And I think of most, I know it comes from God, and if it comes from God, I have to think about God every day. I don't talk about it, just in my mind I do. And I th thank God for what the what I have now, and that makes me very happy about it. Just like what she says. <laughs> yeah, grateful. I, I'm so happy to be with her now, and she so irritates me sometimes. <laughs> I irritate her. But we get over it. Yeah. <laughs> and so we work at it. So the same thing with my children. Uh, they think they know more than I do. You might, I don't know if any of you have seen that. They think they more I do because, I don't know, they, this, this one daughter of mine is always telling me what to do. Like she knows better than I do when I'm the one that brought up her and told her that thing. So, I, so I'm very nice to her, but she talks and talks and talks. <laughs> anyway, that's, so anyway, I have to handle her differently and I handle the other one differently and my grandchildren are really good and I handle them differently. So I look around for love because it is the only thing in the end to everybody, really. Exactly. So that's, anyway, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Okay. Read, read it once well again. again. Yeah, right. read it again. Yeah, that Don't would be good. Beautiful. It's very, I'll do the whole thing through. When you do it all through. Okay, <clears throat> divine love does not require any special type of context for making itself fear, felt, period. It not only awaits some rare moments for its expression, comma, nor is it on the lo lo lookout for somber situations that savor or special activity, period. The last one is, it discovers its expression in every incident and situation that might be passed over by an unenlightened person as too insignificant to serve attention. That's a long thing. Yeah, beautiful. You know, you might get a kick out of this. There's, and there was this lady, a, a Baba. You know, she met Baba and everything here in the here in, in Myrtle Beach in the 50s, and this, I think she was at the East West Gathering. But her, her name was Agnes Barron, and Agnes Barron. I mean, I met her a, a couple of times, and, and she was kind of a abrasive personality and uh, kind of prickly and everything. <laughs> And, and all that. I mean, she had a, a heart of gold and everything, but she was put off a lot of people. Yeah. And if you went to Mayor Mount, where she lived, uh, you know, she'd put you to work whether you wanted to, uh, <laughs> whether you wanted to just be in Baba's atmosphere, she'd have you, you know, digging stuff or whatever. But anyway, <laughs> so Baba went out and saw her out there in 1956. And, and she, uh, and then she drove, uh, Baba and the, some of the men to uh, Los Angeles, and there uh, she uh, Agnes had a problem with um, Ivy Deuce, you know, and so there was a little kind of tension there. And she, when she was alone with Baba, she said, "Baba, you say that we should love everyone. I don't love everyone. <laughs> what are you going to do about that?" That's <laughs> what so she talked to him. What are you going to do about that? <laughs> and Baba said, you may not, you love everyone, you just don't like everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, and that was like, because she actually, she would, if you were someone that ir irritated the heck out of her, but if you were injured or something like that, she would get you to the hospital. I mean, she, she had the love, but 
the, the liking was not necessarily there, but the love could override the, the, I mean, in other words, you could dislike somebody, and yet if they're in need, mm -hmm. uh, you, the, the love you have gets the job done. Yeah. So, and, and another thing, we were in the car when she was driving Baba from Mayor Mount to Los Angeles. She said, Baba, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of people just don't like me. This is in the car. Baba said, but I like you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? What do you mean? What, what yeah. do you mean? Baba well, likes you. You know, Jeff, I just had a kind of aha moment when you were speaking about love versus liking someone. The, and, and the love to me is the love of this impersonal love of the soul, yeah. which has no, no distinction yeah. because you and I are one in essence. Yeah. So how can I not love that, which is the only reality, the, the truth of who we are. So to me, it really boils down to that. Like and dislike is about personality, yeah. and love is about the soul. Mm -hmm. So lo loving, even though yeah. we may say, I don't love the person, it's really not true. Yeah. It's, it's just your conditioning that doesn't like the person. Yeah, the person, yeah. you don't like their personality. They like yeah. the ego. And they can't help their personality. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's great. We should, wow. Uh, Shilpa, read yours again because this is this is underlines that same thing. No, I, I mean that's that's amazing. That's oh, magnificent. Yeah, yeah. Wait, I have to find it now. She goes with her phone again. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can. I think I can remember, but not exactly. I got it. I got it. Oh, got good. It. Yeah. We're all one, and irritations are only surface ones. They cannot affect the love we have for each other deep down. Mm. So, I wrote what you said down. You know, well, I think it's. Important. I should write my, what I said. Down. Yeah, yeah, I wrote it down. I don't really you forget. That's I have it recorded for posterity. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's I good. mean, like at any one time, my conditioning and say Malini's condition, we might be in harmony, you know, like this hour, but then three hours <laughs> from now, you know, our impressions have moved to a different place and now uh, I'm starting to irritate you. you know? <laughs> I mean, but you can't base, even though, even though the love is there, but it's almost like, it, it's more superficial than we think, yeah. you know. I mean, just like you wore red today, and 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 it might clash with you know with what Marietta's, but that's just clothes, you know, and it's just like aesthetics. It's yeah. not, right. you know. So. Super you know that reminded me, Jeff, of the story, and, and I forget where I read it. Um, you know the the lady, the one who painted Father's Samadhi. Uh, oh yeah. The, the elderly, like, the German. Helen Dom, no. Dom? You mean who did the mural? Yeah, the mural and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Helen Dom. Yes. Helen Dom, Helen right. Dom, yes. So I read somewhere where I guess she was in Maribad, uh with Baba and somebody irritated her or something and then she just came and like whacked them in front of Baba. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure you know the story better than I do. And I'm reading that and I go, what? <laughs> You're right. And then like, you know, and then everyone was like, Stunned, and then after that, Baba said, "Okay, you're done. Okay, hug each other." Done, go. <laughs> and then somebody asked Baba, "Like, why didn't why didn't you say anything?" He goes, "Well, if I'd stopped her, the impressions would have accumulated. Now she just let it go." I go, "Oh my God!" I was like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah. That's quite a story. There so that stories. was the trick in Baba's sleeve about makeup. Yeah, you make up after you have a fight. You you just yeah, the Johnny Lo, right? Yeah, like ja yeah. 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 Rather than keep at it and just yeah, <laughs> yeah Baba would be with the men, in, in, back in the 30s and 40s. Baba would be at Lower Maribab with the men, and then in the afternoon he would come up the hill, and he would uh, and he would go like this. Okay, who's fighting? <laughs> Basically, who's fighting today? <laughs> so you get these two people up, and then they he lets them both speak, and they you know oh she did this and and then uh, I did that, and you know there'd just be this fight and everything. And then it would go on, and then Bob would say, okay, now go and embrace each other. And I remember Ron O'Gailey saying the, some of the longest distances she ever walked. <laughs> 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 
10 steps over to embrace that person. <laughs> but, but there was like, Bob didn't have such a, um, a taboo about conflict. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, oh no, well, oh, there's conflict now, there's disharmony. Here. Just, you know, get it out and, <clears throat> you know, I mean, if, if the person's willing, if both people are willing to, to bring it up, and, and, and express their differences. Mm. So I have a funny story. We, when we moved into our house, our house was not occupied for two years. And everyone, the neighbors came and said, oh, welcome, welcome to the neighborhood, whatever. And then we've been there for almost nine years now. And I always joke around saying, I was like, I think they're all secretly like wishing we never moved in. <laughs> 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 <We're> so loud. <laughs> Between instruments and kids and everything, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, this is like chaos. <laughs> but it's true, and then sometimes I'm like, you know what? It's just easier to let it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's probably like running to the border. <laughs> like, okay, I wish they never came. <laughs> so funny. Interesting theme to today because yeah. my quote, actually, the one that was sent to me, oh, okay. is actually related. There's this one line. Oh, go ahead. There's always some. No, no, no. I don't need to quote, but. There's always some eggshell in your favorite omelet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's always a little eggshell in your favorite omelet. Uh. <laughs> or a little sand in your spinach casserole. <laughs> Never going to be perfect. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, so, so the one that was sent to me says, <clears throat> even supposing you do have an excuse, or a cause of provocation, and your mood is upset in the excitement of the moment, don't stick to that one petty cause and keep on brooding over it with swollen cheeks and a cloudy expression. Immediately after the excitement dies down, try to cool off and forget what happened. Take the cause of irritation out of your mind forever. Oh, wow. Wow. That's exactly Isn't that yeah. interesting how the theme of today has it been is. about like so conflict totally and worry and love yeah. and <laughs> totally present. liking well, and loving what's and going on. Yeah. 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 Even supposing you do have an excuse or a cause of provocation and your mood is upset in the excitement of the moment, don't stick to that one petty cause and Keep on brooding over it with swollen cheeks and a cloudy expression. Immediately after the excitement dies down, try to cool off and forget what happened. Take the cause of irritation out of your mind forever. This is like a fell, you know, like... We're going to read that to each other. Yeah, right. <laughs> Every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Especially, uh, especially coming from a family that loved to hold on to grudges and yeah. resentment. I don't know if it was part of being rock Irish or my mother could talk about being angry at something someone did 40 years ago. And how she still oh was God. angry about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very powerful. So, so good to let go. Well, the brain doesn't know the difference between uh, the event happening and the memory of the event mm. happening. So it creates the same level of stress, the same level of whatever, <coughs> as if the event is happening. Yeah, yeah. So we continue to relive mm -hmm. one thing that was in the past. Physically, yeah, exactly. And you know, you can, you can really change your relationship to the past by sending love to those events in the past that make you cringe, okay. you know, or you feel bad about it. Yeah. You can send love, I, I mean, I send Baba's name, and you can, you can change it so that, because the more you, each time if it comes up, if you cringe, then it confirms it in your consciousness exactly. one more time, and it's more and more layers of that thing that happened 40 years back, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So we can actually free ourselves up from the past, not, you know, as it comes up and send, uh, you know, you did something that you feel really was unkind to somebody and they're already, they've passed on, but the impression is still there and you can send love and warmth in that direction and, and uh, change, change it so it's not always, doesn't create you to cringe or terrible. Having spent a lot of time in 12-step programs and having worked in the addiction field, um, you know, 
a frequent thing said when you say, I am so mad at so-and-so, or do you know what so-and-so said? You're told, pray for them. Let mm -hmm. go of the anger and pray for that person. That's a very common response, and a good one. Mm, yeah. Very powerful. Yeah, that's the same thing as praying is the, is the same way of undoing that entanglement. With, uh, yeah. Well, this is really interesting how this really just good. all, you know, we just got together with some of these sheets yet. of paper. Oh, oh good. No, no, no. Oh, oh that's, one. wait, I thought you read, read first, but I guess not. I read the other one. Okay, oh. did she send me on the email? Oh, good, okay. But you got a second one. This is I got to do. Oh, yeah. All right, and then that will be okay. last because it is 12 o'clock and we, we should are finish at 12. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Almost, yeah. one minute. Okay, come. I will be, I'm going to do fast. <laughs> Take your time. Is that infinity? Love <laughs> is the reflection. Yeah, it takes us 10 minutes. Love is the reflection of God's unity in the world of duality. It constitutes the entire significance of creation. As love gathers strength, it generates creative restlessness and becomes the main driving power of that spiritual dynamic which ultimately succeeds in restoring to consciousness the original unity of being. Wow. That's a tough one. No, boy, read that one. That's so good. Love is the reflection of God's unity in the world of duality. It constitutes the entire significance of creation. As love gathers strength, it generates creative restlessness and becomes the main driving power of that spiritual dynamic which ultimately succeeds in restoring to consciousness the original unity of being. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Hey, let's have a few moments of silence. That was perfect. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. This was beautiful. So good. I'm so glad I got out of bed for this. Hey. <laughs> I said, I'm so glad I got out of bed for this. <laughs>